So now that we're set up, we can start actually sequencing and making some music. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I'm loading an empty sequence so that I'm not playing over anything I know of and I'm not gonna be surprised by anything. So those lights disappeared. I think it's empty, but just to make sure, I'm gonna go to the sequencer focus, edit velocity, and clear all. Now I know for sure that nothing's playing and nothing is. So to start sequencing when you're in this focus, you select a part and you start going. This is not only the instrument, each one of these pads represents an instrument and it also represents a part. So between the four banks you have 64 parts, which is like having 64 tracks, and then you select this, that's how I start sequencing. So I have a four bar sequence, I'm going to goose up the tempo a little bit and add a little bit of swing. And the instruments that I have right now are in bank one. I have the bracket kit, which comes from the Prime Loops expansion. In bank two, I have some bass samples that are part of the Dean Ramirez kit that comes with the tool room package. In pad bank C, I have the Toka Disca percussion kit, which also comes with the tool room package. And in bank four, I have some vocal samples. It comes with a Mark Knight package, also from Tool Room Records. So I'm gonna go back to bank one, and I'm gonna start by building a four on the floor. But before I do that, I'm actually gonna go to bank two and make sure that my samples are good to go. So I'm gonna use these two bass samples, and what I'm gonna do is select these in air drums, and I'm gonna make sure that the play mode is set to node on and not one shot. The difference is if you're in one shot, one shot will play the loop to the intent, to its entirety. If you're a note on, you actually have to hold down the pad or tie the pad for the length you want to play the loop. Now, sometimes when you're doing a groove, silence is golden in your bass line. So if I want the, the line to stop and to play another line after a little bit of a rest, I actually need to tie the length that I want it to play, leave a rest, then tie the next note. So I'm going to make sure the two samples I use are both set to note on. And they are. So. We go back to bank one. I'm gonna start with the four on the floor with that kick. So, let's go. Right now I'm cycling through, this is set to auto. So the cursor is gonna go along with my sequence. I'm gonna add a little bit more, a little offbeat kick. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to second bank. I'm gonna put in my bass line. So I'm gonna stop scrolling, go to, go to the first bar, hit the part, then tie in the part that I want. The second loop, I'm gonna go down to that one. And actually, I want a little bit more of a rest, so I'm gonna come up to this. The third bar. fourth bar, so now I have my bass loop going, I'm going to keep that playing, I'll still start it over, keep that playing, now I'm going to go to the third, add some percussion. are kind of loud, so I have a couple of options. What I can do is I can either come to air drums, select, and turn it down the level right here. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to assign, I'm going to learn these two knobs to the two loud bongos. So I'm going to hit MIDI learn, hit what I want to change, and the level. So now it's the C6 level. I'm going to go to this pad. Still in MIDI Learn, and select that level, get out of MIDI Learn, and I'm going to turn those down from the controller focus. You'll also notice that I have assigned to these knobs a cutoff for part A, and the pitch for part A. So I'll add a couple more things to this beat. I'm going to add a snare.
and a little vocal sample. So now that I have my beat going, one of the cool performance things is I keep adding on to it, but I can also use these top four pads to either momentarily mute a part or toggle mute the part. So, if you're in your performance, you start having some fun. And if I wanted to, so right now I'm just showing you how to sequence, but I could hit the record button. And punch in whatever I want. So there are multiple ways to get beats into this. But if I really liked this loop, what I could do is I could instantiate this arsenal in my favorite DAW, multi-track it out, record it. I can upload this sequence to Arsenal for it later keeping to do whatever I want with it later. Or I can keep building on it. You can actually build a performance as you go if you're in a performance environment and use this as a production tool. Just a really quick way to get down ideas and then build a song off of it.